So in this episode, I wanna show you a really effective way of taking this sky and changing it into this sky. And we're gonna do all this in the color page. There's no fusion, no edit page. So let's take a look. So here's our completely ungraded shot. And you can see I've done two nodes already. So the first one is just a base grade. So I've done a little bit of lift gamma again, a small bit of offset, and a little bit of saturation in there, and just, just a few little tweaks to get it in a half decent place. And on this second node here, I've just isolated the bottom. So if I just show you that power window there, you can just see I've done a window just highlighting the bottom bit because it was a little bit dark. So I've just lifted that. So that's as far as we've got. So I'm gonna add another node. So that's option S. And then I'm gonna add a layer node to this. So it's option L. Now this node here is gonna be our sky replacement. And this node here will be the control of the building. So I've already found my sky replacement and that's sitting up here at the minute in my media pool. Now, in order to make this work, we need to key out the existing sky. So I'm gonna to go to my qualifier. And what I'm gonna do is switch on my highlights so I can see what's being qualified. And I'm just gonna literally sample all this range here. Now, we need to fine tune this. So let's go down to our tools here. And what I'm gonna do is start off with checking my width here. And we're in a very good place there already. So I've got a really good key here. So I just need to check these edges down here. So let's have a look at our saturation. And what I tend to do with these is just push and pull till they break. And then once it's broken, just pull back again. So if I go to my high soft here, sorry, my high saturation and pull, let's have a look at luminance now, if I'll come down here. So that's just gone too far now, that's breaking. So I'm gonna go back to where it was. And let's check our high range. That is all sitting pretty good. There's the breaking point. So I'm gonna pull that back again. Just check my saturation again. Check my width. And what I'm gonna do here is just come down here and add a little bit of denoise. I'm not gonna to add too much to this because I'm gonna fine tune this soon. So the clean black and clean white and a little bit of blur radius as well. But we can fine tune this once we've got the sky in. So that's looking like a really good key. Now let's take the highlight off. And what we want to do now is bring in our sky. So I'm gonna bring the sky, this is just a JPEG. This is uh, 6,000 by 4,000 pixels. I'm just gonna literally drag and drop it straight onto my node area. And it now thinks it's an external mat. Now these four blue squares here represent the um, alpha channel output of what would be a mat. And the green square at the bottom is just basically RGB out. So it's the full sky image. So if I take the output of this mat and join it into here, it's not gonna work. So what I want to do is add an effect to this to give me the right controls. Now, if I go to my open effects and scroll down, there's an effect called match move. And this gives me the ability to join this sky to our key that we've got. And here it says match move. So I'm gonna drag and drop that on to my node that we've done the keying on. I'm gonna right hand click and now I have extra menus in here. So we now have the ability to add an OFX input. Now this has happened because we've put the match move on that node. So I'm gonna switch that on. And I also want to disable here where it says use OFX alpha. I don't wanna use the OFX alpha. I wanna use the alpha channel that we created on the node using the qualifier. So I'm gonna take my RGB out. I'm gonna feed it to the OFX in. And now if we come to our match move tools, if I go to the composite, you can see our sky is now composited onto the image. So by using match move in the open effects library and adding it to this node, it created this extra input, the OFX input. And that's allowed us to take the feed from here into this node, which is giving us this result. Now, what we can do is use the match move further because the tools in here allow us to line up this sky really easily. So at the minute we're in compositing mode. So the composite mode shows you the results of the effect. But if we just pull down here, we can go to positioning. And what we can do now is use the match move to position the sky. So this grid here represents my uh, full screen JPEG. And what I can do is literally move it anywhere I want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna middle mouse click and zoom out. Because if I switch this back to composite mode, you'll see that the image is actually too small. So we need to expand the size of it. So I'm gonna go back to the positioning and I'm gonna expand this grid like this. 
So I'm literally stretching the image now. Now what else is useful is in the output, it's currently set to disabled, I can actually set it to the composite. So I can actually see the sky as well, which means that I can actually choose the best bit as well. So at the bottom is actually quite interesting there with those little sort of fluffier clouds. So I'm just gonna position it somewhere around about there. So that's why I like using the Match Move. I can see literally what's going on. Now, if you want to switch this grid on and off, you can switch the effect off here. And you can also do that using your shift and tilde command. So let's reset that back to best fit. Okay, so that's looking good. So what we can do now is start color correcting the sky to match a little bit better. So the color correction for the sky is all still done on this node here. So if I come down here, we can have a look at our saturation. Let's just dial a bit of saturation back maybe. Let's have a look at our hue control. Just see that we're really getting the best out of there. And one other thing I like to do when I'm doing any sky replacement is just blend it back a little bit with the original sky. Now the easiest way to do that here is to go to our node key, go to our key output and just dial back the gain. So if I go fully back, that's our original sky and there's our new sky. So somewhere around about there. And that is looking really good. So if we want to adjust the building, if we click on this node here, we can now go in here and make any changes that we want. So we can lift it up a little bit. And it's always worth a tweak after you've done a sky replacement because you, you might want to see how it balances with the new sky. And we could now go in here and fine tune our key as well. So we go back to our qualifier and just check our denoise. Let's clean our blacks up. I might want to just zoom in a little bit there. And just check what sort of key we're getting. So just middle mouse click. And it's looking really good. So I'm gonna put that back to best fit and have a look at that before and after. Now that's all good and well because that is a static shot so it's pretty easy to do. But if I move on to the next shot which has uh, movement in it, this one here, you can see that we've actually got a little bit of panning going on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how we can go one step further with the Match Move tool. Now, I've got exactly the same setup here. It's exactly the same grade. And what I'm gonna do is just show you if I go to the composite, there's our sky, and I'm just gonna play that through. So you see that the building moves, but the sky isn't moving. So how do we fix that? Well, it's really easy. Click on the node that we've got the Match Move on already. So this is exactly the same setup as we had on this clip. And I'm gonna to go to, not positioning this time, but I'm gonna to go to tracking. And what we're going to do is just change from not our qualifier tool, but to our open effects overlay tool. And you see now we've got this little plus sign. And what I'm going to do is just grab a couple of tracking points. So if I click on here, now the blue that's coming up is indicating that it wants to track the blue channel. So what it's doing is looking for the best channel out of the RGB that it thinks is best for the track. I'm going to click another point here. Again, it's gone for the blue channel and I'm just gonna track that forward. So go to my tracking controls here. I'm at the beginning, so I'm gonna track forward. So you've got reverse track, forward track. And that's now analyzing the tracking points. And all I have to do now is change from tracking to compositing. And now you can see that the sky is moving with the building. So that is now tracked. So the Match Move tool gives you a really quick and easy way of compositing images in the color page and giving you some tracking on those graphics as well. So if you enjoyed this episode, hit the thumbs up, drop me a comment, I always like to hear from you. Look after yourselves, and I'll see you in the next episode.